this video, we are actually going to begin to solve equations. We are going to find an answer to what our variable equals. And so our goal for this lesson is I can solve one-step equations. All right, so we need to review some important vocabulary terms before we begin. So what is an equation? So an equation is a mathematical sentence that contains an equal sign. Very important. If you have a mathematical sentence that does not have an equal sign, that is an expression. So now we are dealing with equations because they have equal signs. You also need to remember um, that we are solving for a variable and a variable is used to represent a number. And so as we're solving for these variables, we're ultimately going to end up with a number. You also need to remember what a constant is. A constant is a number without a variable. And so here I've created a little equation for you um, so that you can sort of match up the vocab words. So here's your variable, here's your constant, and then all this together is your equation. Okay? Now, some new vocabulary words for you. So the word isolate, you're going to hear me use a lot. Isolate need, means to put something all by itself. So you're going to hear me use the words um, or the phrase isolate your variable. That's going to mean that we need to get the variable all by itself. The other term you're going to hear me use is inverse operations. And that means opposite operations. And those are operations that undo each other. And that's a pretty straightforward concept. So the opposite of addition is going to be subtraction. And then the opposite of multiplication is going to be division. And you're going to see how that comes into play here in just a minute. So again, inverse operations are opposite operations. They are operations that undo each other. All right, so one thing we need to keep in mind is this golden rule, okay? So um, whatever we do to one side of the equal sign, we need to do to the other. And it's sort of like the golden rule of friendship, um, like your parents tell you treat others the way you want to be treated. We need to treat one side of the equal sign, so this side right here, we need to treat this side the same way that we treat this side. And again, you'll see what that means in just a second. Um, and it has a lot to do with inverse operations. All right, so how do we solve one-step equations? And by the way, I just want you to keep in mind that one-step um, equations are just the tip of the iceberg here. So once we get one-step equations down pat, we're going to move on to two-step equations and so on and so forth, okay? Um, so this is just the beginning of solving for variables. All right, so step one with one-step equations, this is what your equation is going to look like, um, one form of it anyway, x plus 5 equals 8. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to find the variable and put a box around it, okay? And so here's my x, and so I've boxed it. And then step two is you're going to use inverse operations to move the constant or the coefficient, depending on which one you have, away from the variable. So in this case, I have a constant because he doesn't have a variable attached to him, okay? So I have x plus 5 equals 8. Now, this 5 is a plus 5, okay? So what's the opposite of plus 5? Well, minus 5. Okay, now here's my equal sign. So I'm going to sort of draw this line here just for, you know, for organizational purposes, okay? So remember, whatever you do to one side of the equal sign, you have to do to the other side. So I'm going to do the inverse, minus 5 here, minus 5 here. Well, plus 5, minus 5, that cancels each other out. So on this side of the equal sign, all you're left with is x, and so you just bring that down. Now over here you have 8 minus 5, which is 3. And so your answer in this case is x equals 3, and that is the answer to your equation. All right, so... This is the same one as the example, but let's take a look at it again. So we're going to box our variable, and here we have a plus 5 attached to it. The opposite of plus 5 is minus 5, 
And so whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I have to do to the other side. And I set up little equal signs. Plus 5 and minus 5 cancel each other out. And I bring down my x. I bring down my equal sign. 8 minus 5 is 3. And so x equals 3 is my answer. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my variable. Here it is, and I'm going to put a box around it. Now I have a minus 5 attached to it, so the inverse of minus 5 is plus 5. Whatever I do to one side of the equal sign, I have to do to the other side. Okay, and I'm going to put little equal signs there. Minus 5 and plus 5, they cancel each other out. They undo each other. That's what those inverse operations are. So all I'm left with over here on this side of the equal sign is E, and I bring down my equal sign, and then 8 plus 5 is 13. So in this case, E equals 13. Now, you can check yourself on each one of these problems. Go back to the previous lesson and think, does the solution work? So plug it back in. Your solution is E equals 13. We'll plug it back into the original problem right here. Okay, so 13 minus 5 equals 8. Is thir what's 13 minus 5? Does 8 equal 8? Yes, you should always be able to check your work. Okay, so now we have a negative here, so be careful. Step one, box your variable. Now over here, there's no plus or minus sign, but you should know that this is a positive two, okay? So the opposite of positive two is minus two or negative two. So you're going to do it to both sides of the equal sign, okay? Plus two and minus two cancel each other out. And you're only left with x on this side. Bring down your equal sign. And uh, negative 90, or sorry, negative 90 plus negative 2 is going to be negative 92. And you can always check your work. And you always should, really. It's a good practice, okay? So plug it back in. 2 plus negative 92 equals negative 90. So here we have a different sign, so I subtract and keep the sign of the bigger number. 92 minus 2 is 90, and then the bigger number is negative. So negative 90 equals negative 90. It works out. All right. So now I'm going to box my variable. I have a minus 12, so the opposite of that is plus 12. And I'm going to do it to both sides. Okay, these guys are going to cancel because they undo each other. Bring down my D, bring down my equal sign. Negative 5 plus 12 is going to be positive 7. And it's a good habit to always check your answers. So 7 minus 12 equals negative 5. And you can plug it right into your calculator to check your answer. And that'll work. All right, go ahead and try these six on your own.
All right, if you're not done, go ahead and hit pause. And if you are done, let's go ahead and check your answers. So for the first one, you should have gotten x equals 5. For the second one, you should have gotten a equals negative 7. For the third one, you should have gotten x equals negative 2. And by the way, I'm working down. All right, for the first one on the second column, you should have gotten x equals 3. And then r equals negative 1 and then m equals 4, okay? So if you noticed there, this was just adding and subtracting. So this is just the first part of one-step equations. Now what I'm going to show you is one-step equations with multiplying and dividing. So if at this point you're still thoroughly confused, you need to stop the video and go back and do this first part again. Do not continue if you are still confused. If you feel like you got five out of six of these right or four out of six of these you tries right, then you, you should be good to move on, okay? But if you got any less than four right, you need to stop and do the first part of the lesson again before you move on. Okay, now, we're gonna still keep with one-step equations, but this time, we are gonna be doing the inverse operations with multiplying and dividing. So, the same steps apply. Step one, we are still going to box the variable. And step two, we still need to use the inverse operation to move the number away from the variable. But this time we do not have a constant, we have a coefficient because our number is attached to the variable. So here we have a number attached, which means it's being multiplied. So what is the opposite of multiplication? Division. And so we're going to draw a division bar, and since it's being multiplied by 5, we are going to divide by 5. But whatever we do to one side of the equal sign, we need to do to the other side of the equal sign. So 5 divided by 5, or multiplication and division, they cancel each other out, and you're left with x, and you bring down your equal sign. 55 divided by 5 is 11. Now, you probably saw in the U tries, it is proper form to flip this back around. The variable should always be on the left-hand side in your final answer. So X equals 11 is going to be your final answer. And with the adding and subtracting ones, um, the same rule applies here. You should always check your answer. So I'm going to plug it back in. 55 equals 5, and then I'm going to plug 11 in for X. So 55 equals 5 times 11 is 55, and so the answer works out perfectly. All right, now, don't let this freak you out. So step one, box the variable. Step two, just ask yourself, what's happening here? Is it adding, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing? What's happening to the variable? Well, there's a division bar there, so division's happening. So what's the opposite of division? Multiplication. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply a 4 here, and I'm going to multiply a 4 here. Multiplication and division cancel each other out, okay? So all you're left with here is A, bring down your equal sign, 6 times 4 is 24. That is your final answer. Now, as always, check your work. Plug 24 in for A over 4 equals 6. What's 24 divided by 4? 6 equals 6, and your answer works out. All right, go ahead and box your variable. You have multiplication happening here because they're attached to each other. So the opposite or the inverse of multiplication is division. So I'm going to divide by 5, but I have to do it to both sides. Multiplication and division cancel each other out, so I'm left with x. I'm going to bring down my equal sign. Negative 45 divided by 5 is negative 9. And as always, I should be checking my answer. So 5 times negative 9 equals negative 45, and that is true. 5 times negative 9 is negative 45 equals negative 45, and that checks out.
Okay, now go ahead, box your variable. Now this time, what do we have happening here? Is this multiplication or division? It is multiplication because we have a number attached to a variable, okay? So some of you may be saying, well, that's division because we have a fraction bar. Well, it's not because this is a number attached to the variable. The variable is not being divided into it, okay? So what we need to do is divide by one-third. So we're going to divide by one-third, and we're going to divide by one-third. So multiplication and division, they cancel each other out. I'm left with P equals, and over here we have a division with a fraction, and so it's just very simple. We need to do a keep change flip. So negative 6 divided by 1 third. Do your tic-tac-toe. Keep change flip. Negative 6 over 1 times 3 over 1 and that's going to be negative 18. And as always, check your answer. So we have 1 third times negative 18 equals negative 6. Put that guy over 1. So let's see. 1 times negative 18 is negative 18. 3 times 1 is 3, and that simplifies to negative 6 equals negative 6, it works. All right, so step one, box our variable. Step two, what do we have happening? Well, we have division, clearly, because there's a division sign. What's the opposite of division? Multiplication. So we're going to do times 7 and times 7, okay? Multiplication and division cancel each other out. Bring down your K, bring down your equal sign. 12 times 7 is 84. As always, go ahead and check your answer. 84 divided by 7 equals 12. And it looks like that was correct. All right. So again, box our variable. What's being done here? Division or multiplication? Division. So what's the inverse of division? Multiplication. So we're going to multiply by negative 5. But whatever we do to one side of the equal sign, we have to do to the other. So multiply by negative 5. I know I'm using the x's, which is probably pretty confusing to you. So I'm just trying to make sure that you're seeing that I'm using the opposite. So let me do, I'll do this here. Okay, so these are going to cancel each other out. You're going to be left with f equals 3, negative 3 times negative 5 is going to be 15. And then go ahead and check your answer. Positive 15 divided by negative 5 equals negative 3. Negative divided by a positive is a negative. 15 divided by 5 is 3. So negative 3 equals negative 3. All right, you have six U tries here. Go ahead and try them out. Please remember to check your answers.
All right, go ahead and hit pause if you're not done. And if you are done, let's go ahead and compare answers. So for the first one, you should have gotten y equals negative 72. For the second one going down, x equals 5. For the next one, x equals 21. For the first one on the second column, r equals 24. Then the next one, y equals negative 3. And then for the last one, m equals 50. All right, we are going to do tons more practice in class. Um, so definitely let me know if you have any questions. Um, and we will have lots of homework on this as well. So you will become an absolute pro by the time we are finished with this.